What's Gucci everybody? Welcome back and it's time for another video about lists in Python and in this video I hope to be I hope to be covering deeper into how to work with a list in Python. So as you can see here I have an example of a list of numbers called nums on line 3 and right here I'm introducing a new method called index. Now what index does is index for index I give it a number and it gives me the index of of that key or that or that position inside the list. So for instance, I want to know the index of the element 4 in the list. Now indexes, remember, start at 0, and in, an index is where something is located in the list. So 1 is at, one is located at position 0 in the list, because computers start counting at 0. Just a reminder, 4 is at 1, 2 is at 3, etc., all the way to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 6 at the end. So Sorry, I had to count that there. So right now, what should index four at? What should the index of four actually return? It should return one, yay, because it's in the oneth index, which is pretty nice. Something I also want to show you guys with lists is that there are you can you can do two types of deletions. You can delete elements one way using the delete keyword, and right now I'm going to print out the list to show you guys. I can delete an index by saying delete nums and I can give an index so let's say I want to delete 3 I'm going to give it the index of 2 because it's in the second index and that will delete that will delete the second index in the list no matter what it is and that will that will shift the list over so now the list will only have a size of 6 and 7 Seven, five, six, two will all be shifted to the left and move down an index so 7 will now be at the second index and so as you can see here, 3 is now gone and everything shifted down. And 7 is now at the second index. Also something I can do is so in is something different with remove in that this is how you delete a specific index inside delete, which may not be that useful. Because let's say I wanted to delete 7 from my nums list, but I didn't know where it was in the list. Well, that's kind of annoying. Well, I could call the index method. That index method could give me back where, where to delete from or... I could just call nums dot remove and I could give it the value. So let's say I want to delete seven and what it'll do it was it will remove the first instance of seven. So let's say I do that. I remove seven and hey, now seven is completely gone. I want to note that it only removes the first occurrence of something in a list. So if I put another seven here and then I press the program again, that second seven is still there. I still got rid of the first seven, but that second seven I put in is still right there and you can't and you would have to remove again to get rid of that so so that's pretty dandy you know we looked at that's we looked at deletion ways ways to add there's also ways to insert I can also insert something into a list and so we learned we sh I showed you guys the append method and append always adds to the end but let's say I wanted to add something to the front of the list well what I would do is I would say insert and I would I would say I want to insert at the zeroth index. So when I insert wherever I insert, everything to the right of that index is going to you know the list is going to expand by one slot and move over. So for instance, in this run I I added ten to the front of the list and everything to the right of the list to ten, which is everything in the list because I inserted in the front, moved over one index it went up by one index so now one is at the first index four is at the second index and three is at the third index coincidentally and so on and also i increased the length of the list also you can use your handy dandy length function to see how many items are in the list i can use len nums to see the length of the list and see there's eight elements in the list because there's seven here then i add i add another one and i get eight which is pretty cool so that is another great thing about a list. Also something about a list that's kind of interesting. So what if I inserted, instead of inserting 10, I inserted a list. I did nums.insert into the zeroth index and I inserted a list. I inserted a list, a list of one, two, four. That's pretty interesting. Can you insert a list within a list? Well, the, it is kind of interesting, but you can. You can store anything inside a list. And by anything, I mean even lists in lists. So what happened here is something pretty interesting. So separated by a comma on the outside, I have a list is my as my first element. I have a list containing one, two, four, and then my second element is one. But within this list, I have 
you know, within my first element, I have another list with elements containing one, two, four. Now, what if I wanted to just reference this two? How would I do that? This can get pretty interesting because I could do num zero, but that would give me the, the straight up list. That would just give me the list because that's what's in my first element. So if I wanted to go ahead and get the second element, I'd have to do another set of braces indicating the index I wanted. And that is and that's that will give me just the two. And the reason we do that is because I have kind of I have made kind of a two dimensional list. I made a list within a list. So to reference it, to reference two lists together, you know, you need to do two brackets. And I also want to note you can also make um, it would be called a third dimensional list. I mean, a list within a list within a list, and you just use another type of brackets to put in to put it in each other. So you can put insert lists into other lists as deeply as you want, or you know, in another sense, infinitely as you want, which can get pretty insane, but it can happen. So you can have a list that contains other lists. So maybe you have a list of all um all the students in a class, and then each slot is a list of every grade they've got on each assignment. So if you pull up you know that student if you pull up for that student that student's grades you know it has a list of all the grades they received on the assignment so you can just look at that list now so that's another great thing that's really cool another thing I want to show you guys is I want to show you guys initializer syntax so let's say Python has this really cool feature where let's say I wanted to do something where I wanted to make a list of all the of the first a thousand numbers squared that would be really annoying because I'd have to do one comma four comma nine. No, I did that comma nine comma sixteen comma twenty five. You get it. I want to you know go all the way up to nine hundred ninety nine squared. Well, Python has something really cool I can do, which is initializer syntax. So I'm gonna just type this out right now, and I'll explain kind of when I when I get to it. So one thousand. So what I did here is I use my brackets to say, hey, I'm initializing a list here. And then I, I kind of did something really cool. I first thing I did was I made a rule. I said x squared, I could do x divided by two x plus two. And then I did my for loop. So I said four x in range to 1000. So from zero to 1000, which is zero to 999, because range cuts off one before the number you give it, I'm going to take that x and square it. And then I'm going to put that in my list. So right now, when I enter my list here, as you can see here, I have all of the square numbers. I have a lot from it goes all the way to I can maybe get the end. You know, it goes all the way up to 999 squared. So that and so that's pretty nifty. Instead of writing up, you know, these 999 numbers, I was able to write a rule. And I can even get more complicated with things like if x does not equal 4. And so as you can see here, I have a 4 here. So I can check I can f do this for loop where I go through the range. But if x does not equal 4, I'm not going to put it in the list. So as you can see here. Oh, yeah, because it only becomes 4 when I do the 2. So what actually happened is I only got in I said if x equals 2 so since I'm squaring x I only put it in my list if everything was true here so I did the for loop but I didn't add it to the for loop I only added the for loop if x was equal to 2 so what is x squared 2 squared 4 so I only so if x equal 2 I'd add it to the list I could also do if x um, is divisible by 2 So this will only print out even squares. Yeah, so even squares. So there's no, you know, eight, there's no nine squared or five squared or seven squared. Here's no 25 or um, 49 or 61, which is pretty cool. So that's initializer syntax in a list. You want your rule and then kind of your loop and then any conditionals right after that. And you kind of, you have to write in one line because Python, that's how Python works, just like that. So that's about all. I can think of that's pretty brilliant for lists right now. One other thing I want to show you guys is that you can add lists together. So I can do one, two, four plus four, five, six, and that this will give me a list, just one list of all the elements together, which is pretty nice. So as you can see, I was able to get, I'll change this to three just for 
beauty's sake, I was able to get a list of six elements when, combi when just adding them together in that nice and tactical way that I love Python because you know, it's pretty intuitive. You add two lists together, it's now one list. That kind of makes sense. It's like if you merged grocery lists. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have a great day.